Hello friends, welcome back to this new segment and today's segment, I'll try to make Figo staging easier for you. Though for uh, cervical carcinoma, Figo staging I've taken in depth in my earlier chapter, in my earlier lectures, those of you who are my regular students would know about it. But today's class is special in the sense that I'll make, sir, I'll try to make Figo staging easier for all the cancers by giving you the logic, the tips through which things will get embossed in your mind. And I strongly recommend that after today's class no matter what you're doing <clears throat> you know maybe you're doing obstetrics or maybe you're doing your uh, you know sipping through your earlier notes just go and read this figo staging as a favor to me so that it you know just you know embosses in your mind properly so that and you everybody has their own tips and tricks you know to remember things you know you cannot blindly follow my procedure my method it's just to make the things a little easier for you by putting in a little logic in everything. So let me just start. You'll understand it as we go. So the most difficult staging I'm taking the first, which happens to be the staging for cervical carcinoma. Okay, CA cervix. Why is the staging more difficult? Because of so many stages. First of all, to be very, very, uh, you know, um, uh, rough and, you know, uh, on the very outset, you should know this thing. That stage one and two, they are the most difficult stages. Stage 3 and 4 in cervical carcinoma are the easiest stages. Okay? Stage 4, you don't have to remember any, any cancer only. All you have to do is stage 1, 2, 3. And for cervical carcinoma, stage 1 and 2 are the ones which will, you know, rock, you know, I think break your mind. Stage 3 is very easy. Stage 4 is also easy. I'll tell you why. Now, just imagine every cancer has a way to, you know, uh, metastasize. If you know... <clears throat> How the cancer metastasizes, you'll be, you know, able to understand, you know, the stages very well. So, just imagine it's a CS cervix, okay? This is where the cancer is developing. Closes, and now how does the CS cervix, uh, you know, uh, spread, metastasize? It spreads through to lymphatic root and hematogenous root, right? So, let's talk about how it's going to go further. So, uh, uh, it's there on, uh, it's there in the cervix. Now, in the second um, instance, if, so if at all it has to spread, where will it go? It will first encompass the vagina or it will go to the uterus or it will go to the parametrium. This will be closest spread. That is the stage 2. So, stage 1 is exclusively limited to the cervix. Stage 2 is either involving upper to third vagina. Upper. Obviously, because that's closest to the cervix. You know, only a fool is going to say it's going to go to the lower one-third vagina. That's the third stage. So the first stage is that it will go to upper two-third of the vagina and to the, to the nearby parametrium. Okay, now, so, you know, this corpus spread is not included anywhere. Probably it is in the first stage or something. It's not included in the entire staging. So when you say it's stage two, that means it's gone to the upper two-third vagina or it has gone to the parametrium. That is exactly the stage 2A and 2B. We'll go to the A1 and A2 and AB later on. Abhi, I'm just giving you a crude outlook on the CA cervix staging. Then comes the th third stage. Now, what is the third stage? All that you left here is going to come over here. Stage 3 will be lower one-third vagina. This was upper. This is lower one-third vagina. Parametrial spread without, without touching the pelvic side wall. So, pelvic side walls. Pelvic walls, that means the spread of the carcinoma has now reached the pelvic side walls along with or not involvement of ureters with hydronephrosis. So even hydronephrosis and involvement of ureters comes here. So hydronephrosis, ureteric involvement comes here. Okay, and lymph node spread. Lymph node spread, which is exactly stage 3 A, B, C. Remember that. Lymph nodes are very important and they're very confusing in all different kinds of cancers. I'll tell you when we reach to ovarian carcinoma and endometrial carcinoma, how lymph nodes, you know, affect the staging. Over here also, obviously, you can see the staging being different. I'll tell you about this subdivisions later on. And of course, stage four is, you know, the nearby structures. That means bladder, bladder mucosa, you know, your rectal mucosa or, you know, the distant, the distal spread. A distant mess. Okay, so this was a rough, you know, estimate as to how on the outset you will remember stage of 
CA survey. That means when you're talking about stage one, what is it? Stage two, what in, in you know roughly what it is. So if suppose a patient comes to you with positive pelvic lymph nodes, you're already talking about stage three and probably stage three, uh, stage three C. <clears throat> like I said, A, B, C. <clears throat> now whether it's pelvic a lymph nodes positive or parioptic lymph nodes positive, I'll tell you later. So by now you know the uh, rough estimate. Now. Um, now let's go on to cervical carcinoma. Cervical carcinoma, that means something which is limited to just the cervix. So if it's limited to just the cervix, how do you then divide stage 1A and 1B? Now to be very uh, sure and crisp, stage 1A, I'm talking about microscopic carcinoma. Something which you do not see with the naked eye. So either a biopsy or a pap smear has told you that there is, a, there is some carcinoma. So that means a, a lesion which you could not see by your naked eye is actually stage 1A. It has come, you know, only in the pap smear liquid, you know, um, uh, liquid based uh, uh, cytology or your, you know, a, a biopsy, corposcopic biopsy, which you just took because you were like uh, a little, you were not finding the cervix healthy. So it has come in that. So that is stage 1A. And what is stage 1B? That means a tumor size of at least, you know, which can be seen by naked eye. Actually, it ranges between less than 2 cm, 2 to 4 and more than 4 cm. So, less than 2 can also be, you know, 1 cm. Could even be 5, uh, 6 mm or 7 mm. Something, some specule, something that you're able to see. You know, a lesion which you're able to somehow see. So, that is called stage 1B. Stage 1A is microscopic. Let me just write it down over here. Stage 1A, microscopic. Stage 1B, can still be, can still be seen. I mean, that's, I'm, I'm telling you, I've to be written in the exam. It's just to understand in your practical aspect. All right. Then we, we what exactly is the division in stage 1A and 1B? Uh, I'm sorry, stage 1A1 and 1A2 is that, you know, the depth of invasion has to be less than 5 millimeter. Now, why do we stick to this 5 millimeter depth of invasion? Has anyone told you and do you know this that lymph vascular space invasion in cervical carcinoma happens to be a very important prognostic factor. So the more, you know, big the lesion is, the more depth it will automatically have. See, cancer doesn't always spread through the lateral way only. It also goes deep. The bigger the lesion, the deeper it will go. Because it's not just spreading laterally, it's going deeper as well. Though it's now, you know, the change of, you know, this uh, cervical carcinoma uh, staging has also taken place because they say that, you know, uh, the depth of invasion is now not taken earlier. It was not uh, given because it does not change a lot of prognosis, but it does change the lymph vascular space invasion and it does, you know, expedite the, uh, you know, uh, metastasis to the contiguous organs, but in that you're anyways including in the staging. So that is the reason why they have not included it anyways, because it's being included in a different way. Anyways, so what we're trying to do over here is, stay, you know, stage 1A is also divided into 2, because, you know, less than 3 millimeters and 3 to 5 millimeters, there's only one difference. That st stage 1A1, you can still, still give her a chance through conization, which is not hysterectomy. So if a patient comes to you really early and she has this, you know, cervical carcinoma, which was by chance detected and she is having stage 1A1 as of now, she can still go ahead, plan a, a pregnancy by just the conization of patient, obviously with all garden prognosis. And, and suppose if there is, you know, a, a <clears throat> Uh, you know, positive margins or lymph vascular space invasion seen in that conization specimen, then obviously she has to go for a radical hysterectomy, but that's for later. What I'm trying to do is, what I'm trying to say is, why are they dividing even stage 1A into two points? Why can't you just a microscopic have the stage 1A and then you carry forward the difference? Because it's treatment changes. So if it's less than 3 millimeters, you know, lesion, you can still go ahead and give her a conservative management. But if it's between three to five, well, you have to go for a hysterectomy, but that can still be not be a very radical hysterectomy. Again, it will depend upon the prognostic factors. So stage 1A1 is less than three millimeters. Stage 1A2 is between three to five millimeters. Anything above five millimeters will go on stage 1B. So what is stage 1B? Stage 1B is divided into three stages. Stage 1B, one, two, and three. And is less, it is between five to two centimeters, two to four centimeters, and more than four centimeters. But up till now, the, the cancer is right inside the cervix.
only limited to the cervix all right so that means our prognosis our uh, you know uh, definitive treatment is still radical hysterectomy still radical hysterectomy along with of course <coughs> pelvic lymphadenectomy which has to be done has to be done no matter parametrium is involved or not involved but whenever you're taking this patient up you have and why is there are so many stages and sub stages is because you're trying to understand how much adjuvant therapy does this patient need what are the chances of recurrence and as you go after stage 3 <coughs> the recurrence chances the adjuvant treatment chances the poor prognosis chances are almost equivalent this is the reason why there is not much stage difference over here but here we've divided it innumerable times to understand how well can we you know manage this case by dividing and subdividing so that we understand <coughs> this patient was in initially at what stage and how are we going to follow up this patient how much adjuvant chemo, uh, chemo radiation does she need whether she de does need that at all whether she is a candidate for surgical management because you know the cervical carcinoma is the only cancer in which the first modality will automatically change in or in both others you know your endometrial carcinoma or ovarian carcinoma the first modality is staging laparotomy you're opening up the patient anyways you have a uh, you know exposure to almost all organs for biopsy anyways except for cervical carcinoma so you have to be very very sure of the staging and which is the reason why you have so many stages and sub stages so that you do not mess up with the treatment of this patient and now i start with the second that is stage 2 so uh, now you think about it now the cancer started spreading it will first go through the vagina because it's the closest it's almost you know like flushed with uh, with the cervix it's just the you know the immediate contiguous structure happens to be the vagina that to the two third upper two third embryologically upper two thirds are coming up from the same uh, you know the layer so automatically it will spread first to the two third upper two third vagina so that is your stage 2a and then you have stage 2b in which you have uh, you know this going on to the parametrial spread is there but not to the pelvic side wall now this again stage 2a is again divided into two stage 2a1 and stage 2a2 for the simple reason but now also even when the upper vagina is involved you want to see how big this tumor is and so automatically now what you're saying is when you when the when the when the spread is to the vagina you still want to know whether the pelvic lymph nodes which are the sacral group of lymph nodes the obturator lymph nodes or the inguinal lymph nodes how much will they be infected because automatically when the spread is to the scorticose structures the lymph nodes get involved once the lymph nodes do get involved, you cannot call it stage 2. You have to call it stage 3. So automatically the tumor size also becomes important because that's another prognostic factor. So stage 2A1, less than 4 centimeters. Stage 2A2, more than 4 centimeters. So in this case, uh, st stage 2A1 and stage 2A2, 2A2 will become uh, prognostically important for deciding for the adjuvant treatment, the uh, <coughs> post uh, maybe post surgery or post radiation how many cycles chemo radiation how much to follow up how to follow so on and so forth so that is why stage 2 2 a is again divided stage 2b still remains the parametrial spread and so does the stage 3 a b c c is divided into c1 and c2 that you will see in endometrial carcinoma also c1 and c2 pelvic lymph nodes parioptic lymph nodes stage 3 b uh, spread to the pelvic wall or hydronephrosis because of ureteric involvement stage 3b and stage 3a you know uh, cervical carcinoma spread to the lower one third of uh, vagina and automatically stage 4 becomes stage 4 so this was a quick recap of uh, cervical carcinoma we'll be back with the next that is ovarian carcinoma